Hi, I'm Max. And I'm Skylar. Recently, we decided to start watching Bob's Burgers to see what it was all about. And it didn't take us long to become completely obsessed with the show. But one of the things we love the most about the show is the brilliant end credit sequences. Which is why we created this podcast. Each week, we're going episode by episode to talk about the elaborate end credits. We're excited to have you join us right here on Bob's Credits. We'll make sure the Bob's Burgers end credits get the credit they're due. All right! Now I've had the chip chip a No, I've never felt like this before. And I swear. Oh, wow. We should really do a duet. <laughs> no. Wow. Oh, my God. The, the listeners can't see this, obviously, but I am currently... Skylar just ran at me, and I'm lifting her over my head as we're recording. That is what what's happening we went out to the lake we practiced a little bit earlier and, and now we've like we've mastered it mm-hmm. and i'm gonna do this whole episode holding you like this oh cool yeah that's an arm workout it was interesting it was hard to set up our microphone so that we could do this <laughs> the entire time but i feel like my upper back would get really tired we can do this don't worry okay okay so now that everyone is picturing us in the dirty dancing lift Bob's Burgers has had to parade it. Par- oh, we learned that I don't say parading right. Parodying. It's, there's a lot of syllables. I just call it parroting. Parroting, which is just repeating something someone else like says. Like a parrot. Yeah. Which I guess could be a, va- a bad version of parodying. Don't worry. All of our mean TikTok commenters will come in and call you out on it when you say it on TikTok. Yeah. Um, but... Don't you think Bob's Credits has in some way parodied Dirty Dancing? It has to have. I I can't think of anything off the top of my head, but I 100% believe there is at least some kind of parody. If not, Gene has referenced it at least six times. (laughs) All right. What's up today? My friends. Oh, you know, we're just talking a little uh, Bob's Burgers and Bob's Burgers and credit sequences, but uh, I don't know that we have that much business to discuss. Do you want to say anything? We mentioned TikTok. We're thriving on there. Go follow us. Bob's Uh, credits. Oh, you know what we have to do is make a few burger pun names out of some of our newest Patreon subscribers. Biscuit's excited. He just brought a squeak toy in. Biscuit ran in. So uh, new Patreon subscribers, if you want Biscuit to squeak during your name, this might be your chance. The first one we have to thank is Maddie Hugh. That's for you, Maddie. Biscuit got his little squeaks in there. <laughs> oh, oh, right on command. That Maddie. Was, thank you, Maddie, in Biscuit Squeak. Yeah. Maddie, Hugh, moving forward. You will be known as the Crawdaddy Stew Burger. I love it. Thank you for being a part of our Patreon. We're so excited to have you. Up next, Elliot Smith. Elliot, first of all, thank you so much. Moving forward, Elliot, you will be known as the Bechameliot Burger. Yum. Skylar loves a bechamel sauce. I do. So, and finally, we have to thank Sid Moffat. Sid, moving forward, you will be the Squid Moffetta Burger. Wow. Got some Mediterranean vibes with the feta. You could do some calamari. Yeah, a little fried calamari on the burger, maybe. Great. Oh, delicious. Surf anyway, turf. thank you so much to the three of you. We're so excited to have you on board and on our Patreon and our Discord. If you'd like your name burger punned right here on the podcast, then go subscribe to our $5 tier on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Bob's credits. Exactly. Uh, You'll get a whole bunch of bonuses along with the burger pun name, obviously, and including special episodes, which includes us ranking Thanksgiving episodes like the one we're about to do. You can find out where it ranked. Woohoo. So that takes care of that. Do you have any other business, Skylar? I have no business. I am just so excited. Do you have Mr. Business? Exactly. I have Mr. Business. I am so excited for this episode. We rewatched it last night for the 50th time or however many times, and I was laughing out loud. The jokes were fresh to me. The stuff that I remembered felt so homey. I know you want to say something, but I just have to say this is such a good episode. No, it's okay because I'm still holding you over my head. It's hard. You just, <laughs> it's like, hard to talk. talk. And, yeah, yeah. So you just you just take this one. No, I was going to say we're going to get into this episode for sure, but I have some puns I want to toss at you if that's okay with you. Like burger puns? Burger puns. Oh, yeah. We're yeah. going to play a uh, Bob Hunter Max pun. 
Let's do it. Okay. Skylar, your first pun is the Mary Tyler Bohr burger. Oh, I love Mary Tyler Bohr. Um, you. Yes. Your next pun is the I'll be there with bell peppers on burger. This could go either way. Max. Yes. Yes, two for two. Your next pun is the actions speak louder than curds burger. <laughs> I think curds is such a weird word. It is, and it's a weird uh, thing. Food product. So it's a, yeah. It's a weird texture. Yeah. This is a tough one. My gut is saying don't do this, but I'm going to do it. Max. Yes. Okay. And your final pun is sympathy for the deviled egg burger. Oh, that's so good. Max. Bob. Oh, oh she was so close, folks. Because you love deviled eggs and she we talked was, about it last week. I knew you were going to say that because we were just talking about it because there was deviled eggs on severance and they got some respect. And I've always said I love deviled eggs and they don't get enough respect. So They don't get enough respect. I love them. And I've said that I could eat the whole plate of them wherever I am. All right. Enough deviled eggs. We have got to get into this episode because as Skylar revealed, we are, we love this episode. So Skylar, can we have the title and synopsis for season six, episode four, please? The title is Gail Macon Bob Sled. It's Bob's holy day. Thanksgiving, and Aunt Gail says she can't drive to their apartment because she sprained her ankle. With a snowstorm brewing, Bob offers to pick her up, considering Linda's not great with snowy roads. After getting Gail out of the house, Mr. Business in tow, Bob's car gets snowed in. The solution? He'll just have to pull Gail in an inflatable kiddie pool all the way home. The worst part? He'll have to abandon his turkey, relying on Linda and the kids to finish it and prep the side dishes. Jelly bean casserole, anyone? Also, I have to reveal plot twist. Aunt Gail's ankle was never sprained. Ugh, so rude. This episode came out on November 8th, 2015. It was written by Lizzie Molyneux and Wendy Molyneux and directed by Tyree Dillahay. Love Tyree. And love the Molyneux sisters. Oh, gosh. This is the dream team. This is a great team up. I turned to Skylar last night. I said, this is definitely a Molyneux joint because I am laughing out loud, even after I've seen this episode so many times. They always make me laugh so hard. I think, I don't know if this is right. I feel like they think the same cultural references that we think are funny are funny. Like, I loved... I kind of want you to play the clip. There's a Leonardo DiCaprio reference in here that made me laugh out loud, and I don't think I ever heard it. There's that many jokes crammed into this episode that you can watch it 50 times and still discover new jokes. Yeah. Do you want me to play it or do you want me to say it? Because I know the line. You know the Leo line? Yeah. Okay. Well, they're talking about like what Europe has that we don't have, and they, they do like a list of things, and then yeah. Tina says that they have Leonardo DiCaprio eight months out of the year. I think it's Jean who says that. Nope. Tina. Really? Positive. Why? Because I just remember. And who would be on top of uh, Leonardo DiCaprio's whereabouts? I'd say Tina. I'd say Tina. I could almost bet my life it was Jean, though. Okay. Well, now we have to play the clip because I know I'm right. It's Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving for everybody. Except for Europeans. Don't worry about the Europeans. They're fine. They've got tapas. And Belgium. <laughs> and Leonardo DiCaprio eight months out of the year. Okay. You are right. I knew I was right. Okay, but the tapas line is very funny. I agree. I think the whole, it the is whole so stretch funny. is great. Yes. Okay, let's set the stage. Do we it. have a Thanksgiving episode. It's snowing outside. They're all cozy inside, and Bob has his turkey that he's tenderly taking care of. Skylar and I have raved about the Thanksgiving episodes before. They might be our favorite holiday episodes let's of Boz Burgers. Let's just go there. Yeah, the they best. are. We love this episode. And this is like, not just a Thanksgiving episode. This is one of the best episodes of Bob's Exactly. In I think this episode is going to land in like my top five. Okay. That's big. Also, can I just say, Bob's has this momentum. We get Halloween episode, a Thanksgiving episode, a Christmas episode. It is just like the best string of episodes. Every season, I get like 
giddy when we get to it on this point of, in the podcast each season because it's just like great episode after great episode. It's so much fun. So I don't have too many fun facts, but this is kind of like a good time to bring up one uh-huh. um, since you're talking about the holiday episodes and kind of like how they're all like in around the same season, obviously. Yeah. But if you remember, last or the last episode we did was the Halloween one. Yeah. And now we're already in Thanksgiving. And the next one is going to be the Christmas episode. Wow. So those were all crammed in for a reason because Bob's had to like juggle stuff around because of the NFL on Sundays. Mm -hmm. So if a game ever went over, Bob's got bumped. Mm -hmm. But the ones they played are like the the holiday ones are timely. So if they were going to play one, they'd bump the holiday ones and play those first. So here's the thing. In this episode, Gail talks a whole lot about dating Mr. Frond or how she's no longer dating Mr. Frond. That's her like, you know, yes, she sprained her ankle, but like that's her like sad sob story throughout the episode. Yeah, which kind of comes out of nowhere. You're like, what? Gail's dating Mm -hmm. Mr. Frond. Two episodes from now, we're going to get where that comes from because this episode is out of sequence. Yes. So there is a ginormous continuity storytelling error here yes which isn't it's not that big a deal bobs is you know we've raved about bobs and continuity but because they had to bump these holiday episodes and there's reference to her dating mr frond this episode got priority over the one where she first starts dating mr frond which we'll see yeah a couple episodes from now does that make sense it totally makes sense i think it is a big deal this show is so good and i can you imagine being in the writer's room and, and being like, we should have a Mr. Fron dating Gail storyline? I would be so excited about that. They probably got so excited about getting to write the episode where they're where they kindle their romance and then we follow it up with the Thanksgiving episode and Mr. Fron in air quotes has broken up with Gail. I'm sorry, I'd be pissed if the NFL made me flip two episodes. It's I, not a small deal. I, I agree. It's it's super annoying. What I would do is... Um, Cancel re- football. Yes, that too. Is rearrange the episodes on streaming. Oh, so I that, love that so idea. Because, you know, we're watching this years later. There's It's a non-issue. So yeah. just kind of like switch them around yeah. so that we're watching them in the order they were meant to be watched. Especially if if continuity is an issue. You know what? I personally would like to do that. This weekend or something, go back and watch where Mr. Fron and her meet and then go into this. It just – I – I think I need that for myself. We can do that. It is a bit of a shame and I'm I'm sure – I know their episodes get jumbled a lot, but I I think I'd be upset. Yeah. It's it's super frustrating and super stupid and – It is great because like – I did assume like, oh, the pairing does seem very likely. So I didn't think too much of it. I was like, oh, this is happening. And they're already at the breakup, which is so Aunt Gail. She's so esteemed. Esteemed? Wow. I think I made that up. Esteemed. Steeped in drama. Yeah. Esteemed. I like that, though. Esteemed. Makes me think of a cleaners. It makes me think of a sauna. Oh, in steamed, yes, in that makes steamed. more sense than. Uh, <laughs> I was thinking about clothes in steam, but you were thinking about like a person in steam. Yeah, let's talk about this episode a little bit. Let's talk about it. What are your favorite parts? Why do you like this episode? It's been one week. <laughs> sorry, um, <laughs> can't you just can't? I just, it's so hard not to do that. We've mentioned this so many times. Is the pairing of characters putting Bob with Gail for an entire episode is so fun. She drives him absolutely crazy, but he's such a good husband to Linda that he puts up with Gail and does not treat her as horribly as she kind of deserves to be treated. <laughs> she does. Could Would you last this long? Let's, no. Let's briefly talk. He gets there. She's on the freaking floor, like naked, basically, because she like fell out of the shower, which I think... She did not. No. I think she staged herself on the cold tile floor, probably for hours waiting for Bob to come in. Then she takes forever putting her shirt on. She then has to bring Mr. Business. She then doesn't have a bowl or anything to help, you know, scoop out the snow from the the snow car, whatever it is. So just in the first act, I am just like, this man has the patience of a saint. Yeah. 
And he shouldn't even gone in the first place. He was going because he didn't want Linda driving because the last time she drove, which is a fun little like <laughs> uh, clip they show from Christmas in the Car from yeah. last season, right? Or a couple seasons ago? Yeah, it's early. Christmas yeah. in the Car is really early. Is them spinning out of control while Linda was driving, which is great, like just a callback. And um, Louise is just like smiling with glee. Lo- yeah, so everyone's fun. terrified and Louise having a good time. <laughs> but just like Bob's a saint in this episode, I really think so. And it has one of my favorite moments of all time. Of all Bob's Burgers ever? Ever. Okay. It's up there with like Teddy getting stuck in the um, refrigerator on in the Christmas <laughs> episode. That's a Christmas in the Car episode, right? Yes, that is. Yeah. Should we play it? I know what clip it is, and I agree with you. It is one of my top clips ever. Did you hear me cackle last night when we heard it again? We laugh so hard at this. So Bob is at Gail's. She won't go until Mr. Business comes with them, but Mr. Business is up on the bookshelf. Mr. Business! Mr. B- oh, there he is up there. Bob, can you get him? He'll jump down if you sing to him and pat your shoulders. Oh, my God. Okay. Um, da 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 I don't know, something with a little rhythm. It's got to be jazzy. <sighs> okay, all right, all right. Uh- there you go. Oh, look at him. He loves it. Ow. Ow. You did it, Bob. Good job. <laughs> it's so good. And Bob you know, is so good. This isn't just like, we're not just playing clips just because they're our favorite clips, but also because both clips we played so far are relevant to the end credits, which we'll get to. Oh, that's exciting. Mm-hmm. I have a few big things I want to talk about here. You know I'm a sucker for like, oh, a happy family. We're all happy family ending. Eh, I like the ending of this episode, but I'm also, I'm on Bob's side. I'm on my side in that Linda's like, you have to love her because she's my sister. And I'm kind of like, mm, let her stay home. Yeah, I'm with you. I know, you don't I necessarily, knew you were Yeah, you don't necessarily me. have to. I mean, you don't have to love your own family if you don't want to. So I want to talk about something that's been coming up in the DMs. Oh, yeah, please. I like Aunt Gail because of moments like this. Like you pair her with Bob, you pair her with Tina or Linda, and it's pretty funny. I have been getting a lot of comments that people hate Aunt Gail. They skip over episodes with her. No. They They will not watch episodes with her in it. And I get it. I get it. What are your feelings on this? Does she bother you that much? Could she ever get that annoying to you? She never gets that annoying to me. I can see what people don't like about it because she commands every episode she's in. Yeah, yeah takes up which a is, lot of which air is, in the room. Yeah, but which is like true to the character. Exactly. But she really like, yes, if she's in an episode, she's going to kind of like take over a scene because that's Aunt Gail. So I get that. If they're there for the for the family and Aunt Gail's there, she's going to take all the attention away. Yeah, it's true. So I can see you either love her or hate her. Yeah. I think I'm on the love her side. I think the jokes that the writers get to work on, like Gail Force wins and this sad cat lady thing, are so delightful for me. I fall on the I love her side. I do too. And I just think Megan Mullally's voice work on this character is so hilarious and so delightful and yeah i'm on i'm on team gail yeah i also like how i'm not on team gail no 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 i'm, I'm on, on team, team Ga- i'm on team gail appearing in episodes yeah exactly i also love how unself aware she is like she thinks she's like the hot one of linda and her and she thinks that there's something going on with her and bob I, it it's it's quite delightful in my opinion. I love the moment where Bob says, oh, "It's so sad here." When he's when she's talking <laughs> about like shaving in the in the kiddie pool so she can watch TV. It's lines like that with Bob that you cuz they're not the flashiest jokes, but that that killed me last night. I thought it was so funny. It's like under his breath. It's, it's yeah. you almost miss it if you're not just paying attention for it, but yeah, it's yeah. it's so good. I mean, we we played the clip, but we didn't talk about how funny it is when Bob has to scat to get the cat onto his shoulder. He's so kind. She says, sing to the cat, and he sings. He just, he's humming. Yes. And she goes, no, 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 no. There's something, you know, a little more jazzy. And he does it. To He's just trying so, to like. So why is he this patient with Aunt Gail? 
but not with Teddy. I think it has to do with what we were saying. It's Linda's sister. Yeah. It's kind of his sister. Linda's it's, laid it's down the law. It's a family thing. Yeah. And I also think she's so dramatic that if you don't kind of indulge her, she might do something even more outlandish. Let's talk about her spraining her ankle. Well, let me get to that in a second because you just brought up Teddy. And I just want to say that I was chatting in our DMs with another listener. We were talking about why haven't Teddy and Gail ever um, gone on a mm. date or something? That seems like just ripe for comedy. Ooh, I love that. That's interesting. Now, there are some fan theories that Teddy is in love with Linda or Bob. Yeah, but what's the what's the closest thing that he can get if he can't have either one of them? Ding, ding, ding. That's Gail. a very good point. And he could literally secure his spot in the family. Mm-hmm. To be an in-law, to be an actual uncle. Yeah. Come on. Let's get them together. I want to see it. I love it. Sprained ankle. Hit me with it. Fake sprained ankle. How mad were you when you realized she was faking it? After Bob is pulling her, when she opened that freaking box to feed Mr. Business and Bob said, maybe don't open it completely wide. And she's like, no, it's fine. I was just like... I, I actually get mad in this episode. I would have lost it n numerous times. I have never seen you lose it. Uh, this this would make me lose it. Okay. Yeah. You know, uh, I, and I don't I don't like cold weather. And I'd be out in the cold. Max so are you kidding me? Hates cold weather, I and he lost would be it. exactly like Bob with his fingerless gloves. Someone, please explain fingerless gloves to me. Sorry. I love them. <laughs> when when else can you feel like one of the wet bandits? <laughs> From Home Alone. <laughs> Fash, a fashionable wet bandit. Oh, I love it. Max only has fingerless gloves, and he wears them when it's like 60 degrees, because that's like cold that, that's in California. That's freezing in LA, yeah. <laughs> so cute. When Bob hurts his back, because he's fallen out of the tree trying to save Mr. Business, and they kind of have to snuggle together to keep warm, and he takes a little snack of salad, and he said, what is this dressing? And it's implied that it's the cat's pee. Am I correct? What does she say? He's like, oh, what's this dressing? And she goes, "There's there wasn't any dressing on it. You want a little salad, Bob? No, no salad. Okay, fine. Maybe a little. Here you go. Hmm. What kind of dressing is this? There's no dressing. Something must have dripped in it. Oh, <laughs> Okay, you think that's cat pee? I think it's cat pee. I was uncomfortable when Gail was making the salad in her apartment. I was already uncomfortable with the thought of having to eat that salad, and then this happens, and I think the cat and the box and the salad are kind of around each other. Anything that could have dripped in it from that apartment is, whatever it is, it's not good. No. Yeah, that, that's, that's upsetting. That freaked me out. And I also love how Gail is like, quote unquote, made a salad, which means opening a bag of lettuce and putting it in a bowl. <laughs> That's my my idea of making a salad. I love at the end where you think that she's going to apologize for being a lot. And then she's like, yeah, Bob, you're just a lot sometimes. It's great. It's just hilarious. <laughs> Let's talk about the B story. Have we have we given the A story enough I th love? I think we have. Yes. The B story is phenomenal, too. Tell me. Tell me. Tell, tell me. Tell me stuff about it. I love Bob giving directions to Linda. In this scenario, you are Bob and I am Linda. Yeah. Because a lot of the times it's the other way around. This is what I love about Bob and Linda. We've got a little bit of Each. them. At, yeah. But this is you calling me up. You can't make it home, but dinner has got to get made. And you're telling me what to do. And you're and, like, that's what basting is? Yeah. And I'm like listening and I'm not like really taking notes. And, and I'm like, ah, okay, I got it. And I'm like, don't mess this up. And you're like, wait. I didn't take notes. You are also Tina. You are on the computer and you're like, oh my God, the dressing could kill us as well. Yeah. So I think the B story is a little gem. I love the like her being like, it's okay. I'm just going to move the turkey and they have to perform turkey surgery. And Honestly, I think the kids are who you want around helping you perform turkey surgery because they're like, yeah, of course, this is what we would do. Yeah. And they end up having a blast and they just make all of their sides sweet yeah. is, is the key, I guess. Which I love the kids. I love their, their cute 
little plans, but I'm a savory gal. Mm-hmm. I don't want my mashed potatoes sweet. Yeah, I mean, I don't like like candied yams and stuff on Thanksgiving. I'm also not nine. Yeah, that that's could have true. Something to do with it. That's true. Um, I it's just so delightful. And you know, that's going to all come into play in the end credits too. Yeah, the prepared dinner. Okay. Should we get into them? Um, or is there anything else you want to say? I have one say? more thing I want to say about this episode, which is I love an episode with snow. You know I love an episode with rain. I feel Bob's Burgers is already a warm blanket to me, but if there's snow, I am just like, oh, so comfy and cozy. And I have to say when Gail runs off into the distance in the snow, it's like really coming down. It is beautiful animation. I yeah. think the snow is beautiful. I agree. And speaking of beautiful and snow, Bob's hat. Just, I love his hat. Oh, beautiful hat, Bob. I love Bob and his so snow hat. So cute. Yeah, it's just great. Before we get into the credits, I forgot that I have one other fun fact I wanted to toss out here. Okay. This is a fun one. Ooh. Hence the- a fun, fun fact. Yeah, it's, it's a fun, fun fact. This is the second time- We've seen someone's uvula. I knew it. I knew it. And it's Gail. And it's when Yes, Mr. Mr. Business Biz- takes off. Yes. yes. I was going to say that, but I, I didn't have enough energy to say uvula last night. <laughs> I don't even well, have the energy right now. We struggled last episode, which was the first time we saw someone's yeah. uv- uvula. They were like, we went for one uvula let's go again they're like we've got we've got the animation capacity now the the animation technology to do uvulas let's start tossing i gotta say i'm really enjoying uvula watch 2022 (laughs) this is this is a thing we're gonna we're gonna keep an eye out for the uvulas in this cartoon from now on two we've got two 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 weeks in a row wow back-to-back episodes uvulas give us some more uvulas bobs love to see it uvula to see it you've you love to see it yes okay Hello. should we get in the end credits let's do it okay the moment before the end credits the family has is sitting down to eat this feast that linda and the kids have prepared and bob's about to discover that is not um quite editable quite editable? Ed- quite I say editable because my life revolves around editing these episodes. Quite edible. <laughs> oh, says the, I say every week, do we need to hire someone, Max? Can I take the burden off you? Nope. 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 I am a perfectionist and have to do it myself. <laughs> uh, is this thread? Yeah. What do you use to sew your turkeys? Should we not eat this? Yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. We could, maybe. <laughs> no. I'll eat it. Hey, look who found a plate of microwave egg rolls. My girl. <laughs> With a little rhythm. It's gotta be jazzy. Okay, all right, all right. So we get that last moment, and you hear music kind of like coming in, and little we get. Little ukulele? Yeah, which I assume is Lauren. Very Bouchard Lauren. playing yeah. it, yeah. We get that clip from earlier that we played where Bob is singing da 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 da, and then Gail tells him something a little more jazzy, and then the music gets a little more jazzy. Fun. What's happening on the screen as that's kind of playing? A turkey walks in, and we get a shadowed circle around. We're in the the, um, generic kitchen sequence with Bob, Tina, and Louise preparing burgers. But yes, it's like dark around them, and there's like a circle around them. And then a spotlight. A spotlight comes on, and it like kind of points off screen as a turkey. uh, uh, Waddles? A like prepared turkey. Not a like a, a, a live, live turkey, turkey, a dead prepared turkey for Thanksgiving walks on to has the spotlight on it and walks mm-hmm. to the center of the screen, kind little of little makeshift stage. And it looks like it's getting ready to dance this music. Oh, oh, something with a little rhythm. It's gotta be jazzy. Okay, all right, all right. There you go. Oh, look at him. He loves it. It's Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving for everybody. Except for Europeans. Wow. Okay, so this turkey, I feel like it's really feeling itself. I would say voluptuous. Voluptuous. I got I got made fun of in middle school for saying voluptuous. Um, anyway, I thought you were on TikTok, and I was going to be like, oh, give it a oh, rest. They people. would roast me like this turkey if I said voluptuous on TikTok. Okay. Um, so we got some like some shoulder like lifts from the turkey. My favorite detail on the turkey is that he has his stitches. Yeah. 
I'm not and assuming gonna... Wiley. I think this is a male turkey, but I don't know. He has that's... his legs sewn yeah, on. And that's going to come into play in a very dark way. Are you okay? Listen to what I say. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Gilmore. Oh, I didn't get that. So thank you. <laughs> How about I go eat some clay? I just may. It's going to keep doing. It's Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving for everybody, except for Europeans. Okay, I figured I'd just let it play. Okay. Because I love hearing this like version of Linda's song with Gail joining in. Yeah, it's a it's a sister duet, which yeah. is lovely and reminds me a lot of earlier thanksgiving yeah they the say gravy boat yeah they do team up and sing together and i think she starts gail starts scatting in the background too i love it the turkey does all sorts of awesome dance moves when you hear that big crush or big music break or whatever it's called when they go into this thanksgiving the turkey is just like ramps it up in the dancing yeah and does that classic like hands on the knees crisscrossing where it yeah. makes it, where you make it look like you're crossing your knees so good there's Great a move. spin in there yeah and then it kind of like jumps up and well, tries to do a splits oh uh, that was a big moment yeah then he jumps up tries to do the middle splits and what happens well his legs pop off because they're not threaded on very well uh, i mean but what's well What's what's sewn on well? I don't think there's a way to th sew on turkey legs Cooked. after they've fallen off like yeah. that. So I'm just surprised he was able to even walk. Yeah, and dance. Yeah. Do, the, do the knee thing. Just that would be fine for me. But we get another appearance, kind of as Gene comes in in his burger suit. We should say the family's just doing their normal stuff. Linda they makes her appearance in the window. Aware. She's not singing, so this is kind of playing over. Is this Aunt Gail's dream? It could be Aunt Gail's dream. It could be our late... Character appearance in these end credits stream, maybe? Who 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 appears in the end credits with this turkey? Mr. Bis Biscuit. <laughs> Mr. Biscuit. No, Mr. Biscuit's <laughs> asleep on your lap right now. Mr. Business. Mr. Business appears. But Mr. Business did not hear Linda's song earlier in the episode. But neither did Gail. So is it Linda's dream? Could be. If any were to be dreaming about turkey legs falling off, let's be real, it would be Linda. Mm -hmm. Or Mr. Business. Because he gets the Mr. Business gets to eat gets to eat that turkey leg at the end of these end credits. He the turkey or leg falls off and he eats it. True. It could be Bob it's not necessarily a dream, but like it's almost a nightmare for Bob for what he lived through. I it's mean, Bob's. You're right. Yeah. It's Bob. This is Bob's okay, because he's sure folks. Yes, because Bob was there for the Linda song. Mm -hmm. He was there for the scatting, obviously. Yep. He was there for the whole Mr. Business ordeal. Yep. And he pulled off that thread and that turkey leg at the end. It's, Which is his is, nightmare. This is Bob. He's sleeping, and this is all going on in his head. He's having he's having some some sweat dreams. That's what I call them. Poor guy. Yeah. So, do you think Bob wakes up on Friday after Thanksgiving and he's like, "I'm redeeming myself. I'm going to go buy a turkey and I'm making a new turkey." Today. Yeah. He goes back. He flirts with his little deli guy, and he. Uh, I love that deli guy. Yeah. The guy's like, "Oh, no surprise that you're coming here the day after Thanksgiving to see me and get a turkey." Are you yeah. kidding me? Yeah. Oh, you need a turkey on on Friday of Thanksgiving yeah. week. Sure, sure, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, those are the end credits to Gail making Bob sled. Fantastic. We talk a lot about do we like it when they don't write original music for the credits? How are you feeling about this, the music and the end credits in general? Well, see, this is the thing. It it wasn't just playing the clip like Gail reading her poem over the end credits, you know? Yeah. This they take these lines and make a whole song out of it. So and it's nice. combining the scatting from earlier, I think it's fantastic. Yeah. I love it. I do too. Do you have any low lights? I don't think I do. These aren't like, you know, I've gone hog wild for end credits the past couple weeks. I don't feel that way about them, but I really, really like them. The end, end credits have been pretty strong. Yeah. We're in a good stretch, I think. Yeah. Do you want to score these? Yeah. You go first. I have mine locked in. Wait, did Mr. Oh. Business pick up the turkey leg? He doesn't pick it up, but he mm -hmm. does start snacking Nibbling on, on it. it. Yeah. Would it have been funnier if he picked it up and took it off screen the other side? Probably. I don't know. I like having uh, Mr. Business in, in frame for the shot. Okay. Okay. Do I want Gene eating extra egg rolls that Tina heated up? 
there would not be any left over, but maybe, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's just a little bit of a bummer that the kids don't get to be present in this. None of the characters do besides the turkey and I agree. Business. Although Bob didn't have that much interaction with the kids in this episode. And if this is his true. dream, this is all the stuff from the day that kind of like That's caused true. him to go crazy. The yeah. turkey, not, you know, he was on his brain the entire time. Gail and Mr. Business and just Linda's song and this, you know. It's great. Great credits. I think we should score them. Let's do it. We score on a scale of one to ten H's at the end of Tina's uh. uh. These are almost perfect. Something is just missing for me just a little bit. Well, I think that's a, a few of my like, oh, we don't get to see the family. Oh, what if Gene was yeah, doing that? There's but I'm just okay a little. with that sometimes. But yeah, I, I, I'm going to give them a 9.75. They're almost, they're, it's just missing something for me. I don't know. Yeah. I can't pinpoint what it is, but... They're not, we've had such good end credit sequences lately, and this isn't not quite the 10 that those were. I'm going to give it a nine. Okay. That's it. That's, That's it. it, folks. I am, it is April 15th while we record this, and oh, I am- Did you get your taxes in, everyone? <gasps> Hopefully this is like long gone. People are not even Every, everybody's thinking like, about it right now. Yeah. yeah. And it's April 15th, and- all I want is Thanksgiving. I am ready for Halloween. Apparently, it's 200 days until Halloween. I am ready. Well, next week, you're going to be ready for Christmas because, like I said, we're driving right into a Christmas episode after this. We're driving. We're driving. We're driving right into it. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Follow us on TikTok and all other social media. Bob's credits. Leave us a review. We'd appreciate it. On Apple Podcasts, wherever you listen. What do you say? What you? I'm I'm brainstorming here. Okay, hit me. Do we need to do a Friendsgiving for our patrons? How would we do a Friendsgiving? I don't know. Like a Zoom meetup? Oh, yeah. We can do something. Bob's, maybe we watch a Bob's episode together or something. That'd be fun. Or play trivia while we have traditional Thanksgiving food. It's sign so up. much fun over on Patreon. Sign up for Patreon. Patreon.com slash Bob's Credits. Anything else you want to say before we get out of here? I'm going to say stay jelly beanie.